Now Celtic have wasted no time as the transfer window reopens by bringing in three new signings from the J-League. So let's find out more about Dyson Maida, Yosuke Iriguchi and Rayo Hitati. We can speak live to Dan Orlovitz who works for the Japan Times. Uh, Dan, good to talk to you this afternoon. Uh, first of all, please feel free to correct any of my pronunciations along the way. Um, but we're going to start with Dyson Maida. Uh, he signed initially on loan with a compulsory purchase clause. Just tell us a bit more about the player. Uh, you've got them pretty much right. Great job. Um, and a happy new year uh, to everyone watching and, and especially Celtic fans watching. Uh, Maida is a just phenomenal striker, very aggressive on the ball, a uh, killer finish, uh, just knows how to handle himself physically in the box. Uh, the joint uh J1 uh, top scorer last season uh, with uh, Leandro Damiao, one of the, the best Japanese strikers that we currently have in the J League. And so I think that he will be a huge asset uh, to Ange uh, Pascoglu at Celtic, uh, a player who we all expected uh, was going to leave in the 2020 transfer window, or I should say in the, in the summer transfer window, uh, when uh, Ange first went to Celtic, we thought he was at the top of the list. Turned out that Kyogo Furuhashi was at the top of the list, which nobody saw coming. Uh, but uh, this move uh, is expected in a way and deserved. Uh, he's got a bright future ahead of him, uh, surely national team credentials. Uh, and I think that he is going to impress early. Yeah, and you mentioned Kyogo there. I mean, he's made such an impact since he joined at Celtic. How would you see these two players working together? Uh, would it be Maida playing a central role with Kyogo moving to the left, perhaps? I think you can do that. I, I think that, that would be fine. I, I think uh, Kyogo can work well on the left. He can work well in the center. I, I think that being able to, to communicate as well as they can uh, will help uh, whatever partnership they find up front, uh, they'll make it work. I think that uh, the great thing about Maida is that he will go in knowing exactly what Pasta Coglu wants from him. Uh, he said in his statement on the Marinos website uh, that he, he's going to see the boss. And uh, I think that uh, whatever they do is going to be very exciting. Yeah, and you also mentioned the amounts of goals uh, that he scored in the J-League. Uh, just give us a bit of an insight in terms of how much these players cost. I mean, obviously, this is an initial loan deal, but what kind of value uh, do they bring to the Scottish Premiership? Uh, I think that if you look at the numbers that have been uh, announced or reported for these players, around uh, 2 million euros uh, for each of um, Hatate and, and Maida, and I think close to 1 million euros uh, for Idaguchi, those are somewhat low numbers. Uh, I've been pretty insistent about this. I think that Maida is, is undervalued here. I think that Celtic uh, are getting quite the steal. Uh, Hatate... Uh, as a sort of all-purpose utility midfielder, defender, striker. He can really play anything. Uh, he has such a, a high ceiling, I would say even a higher ceiling than Maida in terms of his value as a player. And Idaguchi uh, is a very good defensive midfielder. I should say he has the potential uh, to be a very good defensive midfielder uh, when he's on and, and when he's in form uh, and when he has the tools around him to succeed. So I, I think that if you're looking at what the players can bring to the team absolutely on the pitch uh, they can succeed under andrew's system uh, and they have the potential to do amazing things off the pitch in terms of future transfer fees if they succeed the sky's the limit and in terms of the marketing and commercial uh, potential for celtic uh, they are going to see a boom uh, that they have not seen since the mid-2000s when they had Shinsuke Nakamura and were the most important European club in Japan. Uh, they have returned to that status. Uh, I believe the Celtic uh, Japanese language Twitter account has 35,000 followers, which they've accumulated in just half a year, uh, which puts them in the top 10 of European clubs with Japanese Twitter accounts. So that's a quick jump, and I think it's only going to go higher if these four players or three or whoever, however many uh, stay at Celtic over the next year or so. If they succeed, I think you're going to see two or three of them go to Qatar and represent Japan in the World Cup. And uh, it's going to be huge for the club, for the players, uh, for everyone involved. 
And you touched on the type of player that Iriguchi is. Uh, he's had spells at Leeds also in Spain and Germany. He actually apologised to the fans, though, as he felt he wasn't at his best last season. Do you think there's a lot more to come from him as a player? I, I do. And I, when when he apologised, I, I think that that is a very typical thing that Japanese players do when they leave the club. Uh, Japanese players do feel a very deep connection to their fans. And if they don't feel like they've put in enough, they, they, they do say, listen, I'm sorry, I didn't feel like I... I you got the best out of me. Uh, but then again, Gamba Osaka did not really play very well last year. I don't think that the Gamba fans got the best out of anyone on that team. So that's not a shot at Itaguchi. It was just a, a not good team last year. Uh, he was done dirty in a way uh, by his time at Leeds. Uh, he didn't really play for them. He spent his time on loan in the second division in Spain and Germany. Uh, he had his injury, which really set him back. Uh, but at the time, we thought that he had the potential to become uh, a, a national team regular uh, who was capable of playing at the World Cup. Uh, I still remember the goal he scored against Australia in World Cup qualifying for Russia. Uh, just an incredible rocket from out of nowhere in the midfield. And, and you saw that there was something here. And he's a bit of a, a wild factor. Great guy, but but still sort of, sort of a, a bit of that craziness in him that I think will serve him well. And as I think I alluded to earlier, it is a unique signing because Maida, I think Ange knows exactly what he's getting. Hatate, Ange knows exactly what he's getting. Idaguchi, we may not see Ange's plans for him, but it's, I think Ange is the sculptor. Idaguchi is the block of marble. He sees the elephant and he's going to try to chip it out. And I think that if you look at the cost of the transfer, it's low risk, high reward. And I think that Ange will be able to get something out of it. Yeah, you said there that Ange Postacoglu knows what he's getting with Hatati. He joined Celtic on a four and a half year deal. I'm enjoying all this insight that you're giving us into these players. And I'm sure the Celtic fans are as well. So tell us a little bit more about Hatati and what do you make of that signing? Hatate is a great signing. Uh, a Swiss Army knife who can play just about everywhere on the pitch, except probably between the posts, uh, a chameleon in a lot of ways, uh, a great playmaker, uh, works best on sort of the left wing, setting things up and distributing passes and, and uh, creating you know, more pressure in, in the midfield and going forward, but can, uh, if needed, as he did at the start of this J-League season, uh, drop back and play as a left back and, and cover in defense. And playing for Kawasaki, which is a very up-tempo, very attacking-based uh, side with a lot of pass work and a lot of aggression, I think that that will have prepared him uh, for working with Ange. Uh, I, I think that he is a, a great player. We saw what he could do at the Olympics, uh, a future in the national team if things work out for him. Uh, he and Maida were both selected to Japan squad uh, for their upcoming friendly against Uzbekistan on January 21st. And that is meant to be an entirely J-League based squad uh, to give Hajime Moriyasu a chance to look at sort of the domestic talent. Uh, they're now not going to be on that squad. Uh, whether they'll be called up to the World Cup qualifying squad uh, against China and Saudi Arabia is left to be seen. But going back to Hatate, uh, he's young, he's talented, uh, he is everything you want in a player, I think Ange will, above all, value his versatility. Uh, he has already experienced so much success with Kawasaki over the last couple seasons, uh, two championships. And for him to come in as a rookie and become a starter, uh, 31 games in 2020, 30 games this season, uh, in such a talented Kawasaki squad uh, speaks volumes as to his talent and his ability and his potential. So if I'm a Celtic fan right now, I think you're excited about Maida right now. I think Maida can go into the starting lineup on day one and be ready to contribute. Hatate may be able to get into the, into the starting lineup or at least make the match day squad. He might need a bit more time to, to develop and adjust to the premiership. But his overall ceiling in terms of his potential and what he'll be able to do on the pitch is probably even a little higher than Maida's. 
and I was actually just going to ask you about the transition between the J-League and the Scottish Premiership. Uh, do you think it will take them a bit of time? How do the two leagues compare? I, I think that the, the Premiership is is uh, more physical. Uh, it, there, You do need more endurance. Uh, you are dealing with harder tackles. You are... Yeah, it, the Glasgow bubble is something that is totally unique to global football, to say nothing of the, the more friendly atmosphere uh, that we have in Japan. So I, I don't think that any of the players are, are naive about what they're getting into. Uh, Maida played in Portugal for a season. Itaguchi had his spell in Europe. Uh, Hatate has had international experience in terms of the Olympics and, and Japan's youth international teams. They all know what they're getting into, but they also know that they are getting a manager who they trust, who they believe in, and who explicitly trusts them. So I, I think having Kyogo Furuhashi there as sort of a mentor uh, will help, and having the four of them together uh, will help, because they will be able to lean on each other. And uh, you're, you're going from a squad that had no Japanese players six months ago to, to four Japanese players, all of whom could potentially end up being starters or at least uh, bench players. It, it's it's un, very unusual. We, we have not had this situation very often. Uh, St. Troiden in Belgium, uh, which is owned by a Japanese company, has sort of been become a clearinghouse for Japanese players going to Europe. But that's a bit of a different situation. Here you have players who are instantly dropping into a team that is capable of playing in the Europa League, in the Champions League, uh, contending for silverware. And uh, I think that it can work. It all sounds crazy on paper. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't, but it could work. And we're pretty confident that it will work under Postacoglu uh, to some extent. Will all four players succeed? Well, you, we've got one of four. Will the other three succeed? We'll see. But it could work, and I think there's plenty of reasons to be optimistic about this working. Dan, it's been a pleasure to talk to you this afternoon. We really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much.